Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video I'm going to talk about how to use Power Apps Patch with updates for complex SharePoint columns. And you are going to love this video because using this new technique that I've come up with, you can take that patch formula, which sometimes can be a long list over here, and using the technique, you can slice it down to even half or even one third. So stick around, I'm going to walk you through it, but first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. What I want to do first over here is look at that SharePoint list. And you must have seen me use the SharePoint list for a scenario where you're making you know, hotel reservations or travel reservations. So I'm going to continue using that same example. But I want to show you the backend list just as a reminder. So I go to the list settings over here. And in my list settings, you will see these columns. And what I've done is I'm going to start off with the simple ones, like the single line of text, the multiple line of text, the currency. You know, those are the three easy ones. But then I'm taking it to the next level. I'm going to start with choice. I'm going to do lookup. I'm going to do manage meta, metadata. And then the people are grouped with multiple select. I'm going to add those as well because four, those four get really tricky. So I'm going to add that. All right. So now that you've seen the, um, the SharePoint list, let me spend the next few minutes just talking about the comparison between the existing techniques to do it, which is the edit form and the patch functions that we've always used. So let's go take a look at that. All right. So this is my app. Made it look a little nicer just to kind of give a little wow factor to it. But all in all, it is still the travel reservation app, right? This is the uh, reservation app that companies use internal in the company um, and, you know, make reservations. So first technique that I want to show you is the with the edit form. And this is simple. It is powerful. Nothing too fancy. But that's also it. It's nothing too fancy. So you really can't go ahead and elaborate too much on the design over here. But all in all, it is still very powerful. So if I click on it, you can see that this is my form. When I click on the form, all of this information is over here. You know, the columns that I've selected, all of them. And then, you know, so the first name, last name, address, zip code, amount and cash, and the notes, these are all the simple ones because they are just a single line of text and so on and so forth. Where things get interested is where you have the city and the state, those are the lookup ones, and then so on and so forth, even the guest name with the multiple select. So when it comes to the submit form or using the edit, uh, edit form, it's literally that simple. It's just the submit form. I'm going to go ahead and submit the form, reset it, navigate it back, and then I have a variable just to keep track of things which are going on. And so that's that's the simple way, all right? But one of the things about the edit form, which I kind of don't like too much, is that, yes, it's simple, but I don't have too many options to beautify the form and you know, give it that extra wow factor and, and elaborate on the user interface and the user experience. So that's when I had come up with the next technique, which is the patch function. It's not that I came up with it. That's the next technique that's available, which is the patch function. And now, as you can see, if you do a side by side comparison, that's the edit form over here. And then that's the patch function. It gives me the flexibility to go ahead and move stuff around. It also gives me the flexibility to kind of change some of the things around, which is, you know, um, the single and the double line and now sorry, the single bed or the double bed. If you went ahead and looked at it for the previous one, it was just a drop down. But now I went ahead and gave it the option to go ahead and put it as a, as a single, uh, as a as a toggle switch. Uh, same thing for smoking. If I just use the out of the box edit form over there, I can just make it as a uh, drop down. Over here, I can make it again as a radio button and I switch to the horizontal. Same thing with pets over here. Now, when I take this combination of the patch function, I look at my save, and this is where it gets really interesting. I mean, I did a copy and paste on Notepad plus plus, and it's over seventy lines of code. But this is legitimate code, right? And, and I broke it down such that um, the uh, combo, the guest name for the um, um, the guests who are coming, the the people and groups with the multiple select, whatever I've selected, I first drop it into a collection. So that's the first thing you got to do. Then you got to go ahead and patch it. And what I did was in the first four or five months, it's just the text columns, regardless of whether they're single or multiple, they're just text. So that's why I've gone ahead and saved them over here. Then came the interesting one, which was the multiple people columns and multiple people columns. I have leveraged a combination of the uh, collection to go ahead and drop those people in the collection. And then using a for all, I use this function, which is to go ahead and save it directly into SharePoint as the right column, which is the people and groups. And to do that, you've got to do all of this stuff over here. And then for the lookup columns, doesn't get any easier. You've got to go ahead and do O data type. Again, the same thing as the O data connection over there. 
directly call that function. And when you save it, you have to know the ID, the value. I mean, you've seen this before. Many of you who are doing patch functions, you've seen this before. And so I just want to kind of elaborate on that is that this is how I'm doing it with um, the patch function. You know, it doesn't get any easier. It is what it is right down to the managed metadata. Now that you've seen those two, let me show you the third one, which I have started using. And here's what it is. It is what I call the new way. And again, the look and feel is almost the same. And if you've already realized the difference, it is because um, in the power apps with the patch function, this one over here, the single or double bed was a radio button. And I went ahead and used again, the drop down, very similar to the edit form. Same thing for the smoking, same thing for the pets, go on ahead and add that. But I've got the flexibility still to design things how I want. And I'll show you a big clue, watch over here. I can put a gap over here. This is something you can't do in the edit form. I could go ahead and move things around however I see fit. I could just put one line over here. I could go ahead and sort things out however I want. Still that same uh, canvas design and then you do patch function, you're not bound inside that edit forms limitations over there. You're directly put, you know, you can go and match things however you want, design it however you want. That's the beauty of the patch function. But check the formula out, okay? I'm gonna click over here, save, and bam, that's my formula. It's literally less than half of the big patch function you saw over there. And I know some of you may already got a glimpse of it. They say, hey, Daniel, you did something similar like that with the attachment form. Is that the same technique? It says, yes, it is exactly the same technique. That's where I got the idea from. Two big changes I did was in the patch, in, in the attachments over there um, in the previous video. I put the link down to that, by the way. Um, I had put it after the first patch and then got the ID and referenced that. Over here, you don't even need to do that. You just do it directly in the first patch. And what happens is I've still shown it in two ways where I will combine the two things, which is the patch and the updates. By the way, updates is part of the edit form functionality over there. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and basically still the single line of text ones, multiple line of text, the currency, went ahead and just patched it just the way it is. But then all those complex ones, I've just gone ahead and used the updates form. So you hey, what is this updates form? For that, let me actually click on one and I'll even demo how to do. So let's go to that complex ones, which is the uh, um, the single and then the uh, the sm single or double bed smoking. These are basically those complex ones. So if you see on the left side, the trick that I'm using is I'm getting each and every one of these complex ones for, uh, columns. I'm getting them as an individual edit form. And in the edit form, I go ahead and connect it to the data source, get only that field. And then when I come to the point to patch it, I use this very specific formula. Let's get the form, form number name dot updates. It's as simple as that. And it'll save it with the same time as you're saving the first data, which is the, with the along with the patch function over here. Same thing I'm doing for all these other ones over there. See, that's why if you look at the way my um, tree view is, there is just basically multiple forms. There's the smoking one, which is for smoking and non-smoking, the pets one, all of these, the complex ones, each of them are individual edit forms. And then after in the edit, form, including this tough one over here, which is the people or groups with multiple select. Remember in the patch I had to do a whole lot, clear, collect, then go ahead and do a for all. None of that over here is just one line. And for that, again, it is a simple form, one form, in its, it's tied to that one specific column or field, and then you go and patch it. So let me give an example on that, okay? We come back over here now to a blank screen that I have, and I'll only focus on those complex columns. So for the first one, I'm going to come now straight to my forms, I'm gonna to go to edit, and then what I've been doing is I'll go ahead and now say, get the um, smoking and non-smoking. So I come back here, I go ahead and rename it, and I'm going the demo smoking non-smoking form. Next, I go to the data source, and for the data source, you gotta go ahead and make sure that you tie it to that SharePoint list, you just have to. Um, and I come over here, and I go to the patch, and in my patch, first thing it'll do is, you know how this edit form functions, you go ahead and tie it to that SharePoint list, it'll go ahead and get all those columns in. So that's why the first time you do this, go ahead and just get the first, the, you know, that specific column that you want. And for the rest, you basically just do a copy and paste. In the copy and paste, I'm gonna show you that technique over here. So again, for this one, I'm gonna do the smoking and non-smoking. So I'll go ahead and remove that. I'm gonna go through that really fast. And see, so here we go. This is a single edit form, and it's got that single field in it. 
Now that you have that, go ahead and do whatever, you know, just a little bit of massaging that you need to get done. This guy sometimes gets to do the tricky part just because of the way the edit form behaves. But there you go. Now I've gone ahead and just uh, treated this as a very single field. And in the single field, it's going ahead and behaving just that way. And so now when I do that, I've already got that edit form and the field in it. So I don't have to make any data connection to that control and then going ahead and you know, passing that along to the next thing. You still have to go ahead and treat it like an edit form because right here now when I select it, I've got in my item, when I go to the default item, it is the smoking. But when I go to actual form, the data source is there. The item, I'll go ahead and go ahead and put in the defaults and put it to the patch list, which in my case is called patch item. Your list could be anything. And so therefore, now when I look at it, it looks just like a single field, which would be the exact same representation of the Power Apps uh, patch function. You can also go and elaborate that and design a little bit more. So right in that card, if I go to the single data card value, I want to match it to this color theme that I have. I go to the Chevron color, go ahead and do the collection. And now even that control looks like it is again coming individually, not with an edit form. Let me continue with also going ahead and adding it now to another very tricky one. Um, and that is the people in the groups. So for that, what I do is I first go ahead and not select the card, but select the entire form, right? And then you do a control C, a control V, which is copy and paste. Got it. Come back over here. I'm going to rename this to something that makes sense to me. So I'm going to say the, I'm going to keep the form. I'm going to keep the demo. I'm going to just say people group. Got that. Come here. Now I go to the edit fields. You can actually go ahead and remove this one. I go ahead and add it. And that is this people and group column for me is called as guests. So let me go get my guest. I think I just passed by. There it is. Guest names. Selected it. And go and add that. And then, like I said, you still got to go ahead and, you know, clean this up a little bit. Not too bad. All right. Grab that. I can go and I can click on this one. Say there get the color and that's literally as simple as that so the smoking and the um, uh, smoking and the guest one were two really large formulas on the patch function when i put it over here with the edit form it's a lot simpler um also to elaborate let's just go and put these, these other funky ones too it's like the first name right there i'll put that in you know first name just the label that's what i do rename that to uh i'll call that demo First name label. You know how I am with labels. If it's a label, I make sure that the display mode is set to view. Next, I'll go ahead and drop a text because it's going to be my first name text. So change that because I'm going to be patching it. That's why I need to know exactly what that uh, control is. You can do two of them. Control C, Control V. Move that over here. Now I can make this as my last name or surname, both the same. All right, and rename the label here. The demo is going to be last name. This one, rename that. More important to rename this text one than the other label because this is the one I'm going to be using. So, last name. Cool. And this is just two really solid examples. This is the lookup one, this is the people and groups with the multiple select. So let me now show you how I'm going to go ahead and save it in the on select that doesn't change. I'm going to pretend like it is a patch, not pretend it is a patch. So I click on patch. I'm going to get the data source, which is patch it. And just so you know, there's a lot of patch, patch, patch everywhere. Just make sure that the patch is the function and then patch it is the name of my SharePoint list. Just thought I'll clear that out. Defaults again, goes back to patch it comma shift enter shift and get my open brackets. I do double shift, uh, close brackets, and I'm going to keep it there for now. Um, in fact, I can go and close it for now. Right. And the first one I'm going to do is just do the first name. So now in the patch, IntelliSense also knows that SharePoint list because I mentioned the SharePoint list over here and the name, which is a patch. It. So if I start typing in first, IntelliSense tells me, Hey, you've got a SharePoint list name, patch name, a first name. Is that the one you want to use? So yes, that's the one I'm going to use. So, I went down and I hit enter and I got that. Now I need to just reference the name of the column, um, the column. So this was the one for the 
First name, what I do is the new technique that I've been working with is I come over here and select the column name. I don't even spend time scrolling around. If it's a smaller tree view, then yeah, you can find it. But what I do is I click over here, come up to the text input, double click, control C, got it. Come back over here and paste it. And this was going to be the text. So we got that one done. Now let's do the second for the last name. So I come in and do the um, last name. IntelliSense gave me the name. Perfect. This one is, is a demo last name. So let me start typing in demo last name, a uh, demo last name text dot text. And I got those two important ones done. Next is, this is how I did it for the other one, by the way, patches. I went in and grabbed those, you know, single line, multiple line, currency. That's the easy ones. Went in and grabbed it over here. The next one was, as an example, is the, when I'm now adding the update to the patch, the one which is the class close bracket, I come to one left of it. So there's a, between the curly brackets and the close bracket, curve bracket, I come there and I make sure I just get the curve bracket out. Next, I put in a comma, all right, comma, and that is where you start adding those other forms. It's literally that simple. So for the sake of this example, let's go grab those two that we did. The smoking one, which I did smoking and non-smoking room, you got to come and select that and make sure you get the entire form name, not just you don't worry about the data card or the data card um, or the data card value. You go and get the entire form name. And for that, you can just double click over here, do a control C, go back to my save and in my save, I'll go in now. Remember, at this point, I paste it and hit dot updates. And that's it. I can do the other one over here. Go below that and grab the other one, which is the guest names. Again, not the data card or the data card value. You want to get the form. That's why I went and named it that way. I ended it with the form. That doesn't make sense. Double click on that to get the correct name. Control C, come back here and paste it right below that dot updates. And there you go. See, no <laughs> big complex formulas that I got to figure out or delete. It's literally that easy to go ahead and make that. And this is basically what I've done for all the other ones. I don't care how complex the column is. Or I don't care what all is the backend connections over there. I just go ahead and pretend that each and every one of those column is my edit column and it works. So if I go and now do a save, remember the only four items that are going to be saved is first name, last name, smoking, non-smoking. So I'll go ahead and say, um, Daniel, and I will say Christian smoking. I am a non-smoking person. So, so remember when I just selected the data card value, sorry, when I selected just the edit form and went and tied it to that field, automatically the data came with it. Like I didn't have to go like in the previous patch function, I would put a drop down of, or the combo box. I would have to attach it to the patch function. So that one step also we saved, which means it's not just saving us the time to make a long patch function. It's also saving us time to build the form. So I'm a non-smoking. My guest name, I'm going to say for now, it's going to be um, myself and um, multiple selects. I'm going to say it's going to be my wife as well. So Rosanna, the two of us, items two. Go ahead and save it. Oop, see the ants marching over there. So let's go and take a look at our list. When I go take a look at our list, there's the new one that came in. The first name, last name was Daniel Christian. And then the only other was, was the um, smoking, got that. And then the two, which is the Daniel Christian, the Rosanna Christian. That simple. Wasn't that awesome? So let's do a quick recap. The quick recap I showed was I was able to combination of the patch function and the update function. The update is the same as we do in the submit form. And what I did was I went ahead and showed an example that with the patch, go ahead and use those simple ones, single line of text, multiple line of text, currency, go ahead and use those. But for those complex ones, like the lookup, multiple choice, multiple select for the people and groups, and that dreaded manage metadata, hey, now it is easy. Go ahead and just add each of them as an individual field in each edit form, and it just works. And then after the patch function, just go ahead and add the form name dot updates and just keep adding them. So if an example, if you saw when I compared the two, one of them had literally 75 lines of code, the big mega patch function, but the other one had like 18 lines. I mean, we sliced that down into less than half and more importantly, it became very easy. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. As always, keep power apping. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe 
click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.